Call it another sign of France's political upheaval. Traditional trade union banners uh, were there, but often overlooked this Wednesday at Paris's May Day 2019. Instead, grabbing the attention, the yellow vests who've been protesting since November alongside Black Bloc's anti-globalization activists. What to make of the violence that's part of a broader upheaval? Unions are weaker in this country, but so are political parties. Basically, the buck stops with the president. When Emmanuel Macron ran and won as an independent nearly two years ago, he blew away the mainstream center-left and center-right blocs, weakened our, all the institutions that stand between Macron and the people, it seems. This May Day follows three months of town hall-style meetings organized in response to the Yellow Vests movement and promises of new measures. So, what to expect and what to expect from European elections at the end of this month, where some inside the Yellow Vest movements have now registered to run. Amid claims of a silent majority that's had enough of the violence these past months, how will it all play out when citizens cast their ballots on May the 26th? Today in the France 24 debate, what to make of the May Day violence and joining us, France 24's Sandro Leutens is uh, with us. Sandro, tell us where you are. Well, at the moment, I'm here at Place d'Italie. Place d'Italie is the final uh, stage of today's march that started earlier this afternoon uh, from uh, Montparnasse. And protesters just started arriving about an hour ago. Now they're all here. It's still not finished, but there's this feeling that uh, they're going to start dispersing soon. soon. And right behind me, and as you can see, it's a very peaceful setting. Uh, it looks more like a sit-in at the moment than anything else. All right, we'll talk about what, what, what you have witnessed uh, along uh, this Wednesday afternoon. Uh, also in the company of uh, Natalia Pouziray, French member of parliament from Emmanuel Macron's La République en Marche party. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome as well to André Lané, spokesperson for Yellow Alliance, which has uh, put forth a slate of candidates, including yourself, for the European elections. Welcome to the show. Thanks you to invite me. Invite me. And also joining us is uh, freelance reporter Thierry Lévesque. Nice to see you again. Good evening. The uh, France 24 debate on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24debate. Yeah, um, lots of people on the streets of uh, Paris uh, this uh, Wednesday. Most of them peaceful, some not. Yuka Royer has more. Chaotic scenes in the streets around Montparnasse train station. Even a massive police presence failed to stop a small group of protesters from wreaking havoc. Rioters joined traditional May Day demonstrators, who this year were out to voice their dissatisfaction with President Emmanuel Macron's economic policies. We're being crushed under the weight of taxes. Pensions have fallen. I went into retirement with a few savings, but now I have a lot less and can't make ends meet. Some criticized the police for their use of force. Stun grenades damage the ears and make you deaf, and tear gas doesn't distinguish between good and bad protesters. It destroys your lungs and bronchial tubes. Authorities were particularly wary about the so-called black bloc, masked and hooded anarchists bent on destroying what they see as capitalist symbols. Labour unions distanced themselves from the violent protesters, calling for peaceful May Day marches. But some in crowds were more forgiving. If you think about the violence the government is inflicting on us, what little violence we use amounts to absolutely nothing. It's just a warning sign. If we have to resort to that, it means that we don't have any other solution. Hundreds of shops and restaurants were closed as they braced for the unrest. Police also carried out preventive searches at major train stations and arrested dozens before rallies began. Yes, Sandra Leutens, more than uh, 200 arrests uh, this uh, Wednesday in Paris. Were these demonstrations any more or less violent than what we've seen since the month of November? Well, let's be honest, uh, authorities had said that there was going to be a lot of violence. And we did witness violent clashes 
throughout the day. But to be honest, I mean, it's nothing compared to what we've seen in November or back in, in, in early December. Even uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, in March, I've covered uh, these uh, protests, these uh, particularly violent days of protest. And it's today nothing compared to that. We've seen some violent clashes, some uh, shooting of tear gas. But, I mean, in the end, it was rather peaceful on this rally here, on this march here from Montparnasse to uh, Place d'Italie. Uh, there were other rallies elsewhere in, uh, in France with more uh, clashes, obviously. But, I mean, if we really take some distance and think about the way uh, Yellow Vest uh, uh, protesters uh, it did start violent, really violent clashes for several hours uh, in early December or in March. Well, uh, today was rather, a rather quiet day, I'd say. And what was the chemistry like? Because uh, you have the trade unions on the one hand, uh, in some cases with separate marches. You had the yellow vests and you had those black blocks. H how did the three different groups, uh, what, was the, what, what was the chemistry between them? Well, it's fairly complicated because uh, obviously uh, the unions and the yellow vest m protesters, well, they weren't really happy about the fact that the black blocs were here. The unions were really afraid that the violence would actually uh, make uh, their demands just go silent and that they would not be heard, which is sort of uh, what happened in the end, because as uh, you've seen all day, what we've been talking about, what all media have been talking about, well, it was the clashes and not really the unions' uh, the unions' demands. Actually, most uh, union members, they left uh, the march before uh, the march actually arrived here at uh, Place d'Italie and, well, uh, the Yellow Vest protesters, it was uh, sort of a yellow vest uh, day. It really felt like a usual uh, yellow vest uh, protest. And the, the black blocks, well, uh, well, the black blocks, they were expected to come uh, in, in about a thousand of them, maybe two thousand from abroad, from uh, the uh, Paris region. Difficult to say how many uh, actually came in the end. We've met several. I spoke to one who explained to me uh, that uh, police forces uh, uh, found the arsenal they had hidden, because this is one tactic uh, that uh, uh, the black uh, blocks are using in the previous days and days before uh, uh, before the uh, the protest march. Well, they sort of hide arsenal, some 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 metal bars, some uh, smaller weapons along the path of the march in order to uh, go and get them during the march. And what happened is that what well, that's what one of them told us when he went to the hiding place. Well, it was empty. All right, it just and you were and, saying which means which means that police forces had uh, found them first. Police forces had found them first. Did he tell you what his motivation was for uh, for his modus operandi, which is basically to confront the police with violence? Well, no, he did not. Obviously, it's not that easy to actually talk uh, to a member of the black blocs. The black blocs, the black bloc groups, uh, again, they're a libertarian anarchist anti-capitalist group, uh, they say it is okay to be violent against uh, state authority, against uh, police forces. So to them, it's normal if there are clashes with police, because that's the way uh, they, that the message is actually going to... Yeah. All right, many thanks uh, for that live update. Uh, Sandra Leutens joining us here in the France 24 debate from Paris's uh, Place uh, d'Italie, talking about those, those black blocks. They were ta as, as Sandra was mentioning, the interior minister had warned there would be uh, several thousand of them coming from abroad. Uh, some of the yellow vests saying that uh, without the violence, their cause wouldn't get the attention it deserves. With the violence the government is inflicting on us and everything that follows, the little violence we can inflict back is absolutely nothing. It's actually a warning sign. If we have to get to this level, it's because there's a real problem and we don't have any other solution than to act in this way. So, um, Thierry Lévesque, let me begin with you. You heard Sancho saying it was mostly peaceful, yet the images were showing, like, like all the other media outlet, are of the violence. Yes, but uh, uh, it was peaceful today, but since the beginning of the movement in November has been pretty violent. And we should uh, say that uh, without this violence, probably the government and the president wouldn't have reacted by uh, 
admitting the situation uh, and uh, conceding 17 billions uh, in measures, in social measures. So the problem is that this violence was, in a way, uh, taken in consideration. And um, uh, the president and the government uh, leave the persons believe that you should be violent in the streets to obtain something, as at the same time the trade unions are side, put aside. I heard on the radio this morning that uh, Mr. Martinez, the leader of uh, one the of CGT the main trade unions, union. CGT, he was not even invited next week uh, for the social conference. So I think that this a uh, violent episode of uh, social movements in France is, is a problem in itself because, in a way, it was, uh, it was efficient. We must... Uh, we must uh, uh, let let me this. bring in André Lannay on this. Uh, André, May, May the 1st is a day for trade unions. Have you taken the place of the trade unions? I was in the middle of the, the riot. It was just uh, a hell. It was the hell. Everything is broken. Black blocks was everywhere. Uh, we don't want that, definitely. Uh, we can't say uh, it was less violent, it, it was more violent. Anyway, it was violent. We don't want violence. We are yellow vest. We want justice. We want real democracy. It was just a nightmare. We don't want this anymore. And what about your, your, the, the, the relationship with the trade unions? Uh, the attention is on you, not the unions. What do you make of that? This day, the 1st of May, could have been uh, just a union between the Union and Yellow Vest. Just to say, we are, it, was, uh, it could have been the feast, the feast of the work, the feast of the citizen, and it became the war between citizens and uh, our government. All right, let's get the reaction, Natalia. Union or Yellow Vest? Let, let me get, get the reaction, Natalia Puziraf, you, you, you're up to that. Well, I think that... May Day is uh, the Workers' Day, and um, of course the Black Blocs, Black Bloc groups uh, were there to just take the opportunity of the march to um, to do what they do. In fact, they are anti-system and they and they act violently. Uh, then I think the Yellow Vest, in that respect, were as maybe embarrassed as the trade unions were. Uh, by this, uh, you know, the involvement of uh, the black blocs. Uh, but hopefully everything was uh, kept under control. Uh, the uh, security measures that have been taken are really high since last year because, uh, yes, we have to remind that it's, uh, it's last May um, 2018 that it started. It was the first time we have seen black blocs group groups acting in, in France, actually. And uh, since that, we had this, uh, you know, recurring events with a yellow vest. And so our security system has been improved. But uh, I would say that today, so the, the, the for, of course, the image is blurred. It's completely blurred. But we, we live a... What do you mean by the image is blurred? Yes, I think for the trade unions, it's very difficult for them to, to be heard at the moment because the, the, um, our... Uh, you know, democracy, the way it works usually, and um, the dialogue between between government and trade unions um, is challenged by the uh, the uh, Yellow Vest uh, movement, for sure. So we cannot ignore that. And it has been such... Uh, so the, uh, the, the Of course, the, union, the unions would point the finger at the government. Uh, there's been labor reforms, uh, most notably uh, collective bargaining uh, has been weakened in France. The the, the you saw the referendum uh, against yeah. the unions to, yeah, but there to has put been them a, aside in the company. No, there has been, you know, with the um, reforms regarding the um, um, the the law, the um, the, wor the work uh, reforms, they, they the trade unions were involved in the and were, uh, you know, informed by the government. Not only informed, there was a dialogue happen happening. Um, I remember it started. Yeah, some of the unions signed on, and others didn't to the uh, to the to the reform. Yeah, but it's a bit the game, you know. Some trade unions want to get a compromise, 
and some others, they refused. But it's, I would say, as usual. So you can't say there was no consultation with the trade unions. There was uh, consultation. But since the uh, Yellow Vest uh, movement, I think it's uh, the trade unions have some uh, kind of issues of finding their place in this uh, kind of social uh, movement. But I must say, on the other side, the uh, Yellow Vest uh, movement is is rather limited, you know. It's it's like thirty thousand people or so protesting, and um, and with maybe a, um, a core of ultra yellow vests, as we meant, as we we call them, that is of a few thousand people, and um, of course they have some sympathy within the the, the people uh, because they're asking for you know to pay less taxes and so on. So it's and to redress inequalities. But but uh, by the end of the day, uh, you know, I think uh, now the people want this um, uh, yellow vest action to stop. I think it's the, the time has come for an end. Is so it, maybe it, this day was a bit blurred, but maybe it's uh, and hopefully it will be um, we will have, a, on, you know, a new uh, chapter opening up. André Lanné, what's the strategy going forward for the Yellow Vests? Is it to continue the Saturday protests the way they've gone or to have a pause or to think of some new strategy? The movement will continue. We have no dialogue with Black Blocs. Black Blocs and Yellow Vests, it's not the same thing. We we don't want them to come and break everything, but we, we want our government to listen to us. There is seven months we ask for more democracy. We ask for more dignity. And the government is in, can't hear us. Macron never give us what we need. There's just been, the, the, so there's been, the hang on, but on, the, on that point, André Lanné, you've just come out of those three months of what they've been calling here the great debate, those town hall style meetings. Wasn't that a, a dialogue with, with the citizens? This great debate cost millions of euros. There is nothing in this great debate who gives something to French citizens. Nothing. Peanuts. Peanuts. All right, we're going to pick up on these points. We have to, we have to take a very we have to take a very quick break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate. Welcome back, or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate, and we're speaking on the heels of uh, May Day marches in France, traditionally the turf of trade unions, but the violence on the uh, sidelines of the big, biggest march here in Paris between yellow vests, uh, black blocks, and police has been uh, uh, dominating the headlines. With us to talk about it is Natalia Pouziraf, French Member of Parliament from Emmanuel Macron's La République En Marche party. Journalist uh, Thierry Lévesque is with us, as is André Lanné. André Lanné, who is a candidate for the European elections under the Yellow Alliance banner. Welcome back uh, to all of you. Um, we've been talking about how uh, the Yellow Vests overshadowing those traditional trade unions. Let's listen to some of their leaders. First, the leader of the communist-aligned CGT union. It's important not to get the wrong idea about today. This is a very important day of action in the wake of President Macron's speech last week. In that, he pretty much said, I've heard you and I won't change a thing. So there's that same message, Natalia Puziref, that uh, uh, the government uh, isn't listening. Yeah, this is a traditional game for CGT. Uh, if you... Talk to other trade unions, uh, like CFDT, for instance, it is more moderate and was looking for a compromise. You will see that they acknowledge that a lot has been done and we are on the good, uh, on the good tracks. And even if they don't agree with everything what, that was proposed with um, President Macron, um, they think that on the overall, it's a very positive move. 
Um, in fact, um, we are keeping the same roadmap because we are actually doing more for the purchasing power of the people. So I know the people, maybe the yellow vest are still thinking it's not enough or not quick enough because they are very impatient. But, you know, that's what we started doing when we lower the social taxes, for instance, when we uh, decided the new measures in, in December, uh, when, um, you know, the uh, bonuses, um, policies have been put in place and many things that have been done, especially for the lower income uh, working people. And um, so that, you know, it's, uh, it's official, you know, the, 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 the growth in uh, the increase in purchasing power is like 850 euros uh, on average for this year, 2019. So the purchasing power is definitely increasing. And if you add on... But is it increasing the, for everyone? That's the question. Yes, I would say that uh, it will increase for the people with the lower uh, revenues. And then we add on that, we top on that, the 5 billion uh, euro of uh, tax cuts, which will profit more be profit benefit to the middle class. And this is where maybe most of the yellow vest are in this like middle class, they have, um, the, they feel they, they pay too much taxes. And this is what we are going to, um, to cut down. A Thierry Lévesque recent study uh, by the OECD shows France does fairly well among member states uh, in terms of taking care of the poorest, but it is those middle classes that feel is the it, squeeze. Is it always an argument saying that France is better among uh, other European unions, but if, if you're a, a low-wage uh, uh, employee, you, you don't feel it like this. I think uh, uh, the president has conceded, actually, to the Yellow Vest movements, and to his forms of action, uh, 17 billion euros. But we must understand that this 17 billion euros is mainly composed of cancelling measures, cancelling uh, more taxes. He had decided before. So for the starting with the fuel tax, yeah, the fuel tax, but pensioners also. He went back to the statu quo ante. He, he doesn't increase taxes. He, he, he puts. He indexes uh, the pensions back on inflation, etc. So basically, the situation is more or less the same as in the beginning, as it was resented as um, unfair. And chiefly, it doesn't act on wages, which is a, a, an issue for uh, small people. In France, uh, wages are quite low for uh, so what can uh, the small French, employees. So what can the French president do now to satisfy the likes of André Lanné, who's with us here? No, I don't, I don't think it's, uh, it will be enough anyway to, uh, to uh, uh, put an end to this movement because uh, the situation is more or less the same as it was at the end of the year when the movement started. Oh. But it has cost a lot okay. to, the, uh, to the state because these measures must be financed and Madame la Députée is going to participate to find the resources mm. to finance, the, sure. uh, sure, which we... at the moment are quite... Uh, not very clear, is it? Yes, but well, we will find a way. But but uh, coming back to what you said, I think the first effects of the the, the measures that were taken in December can be um, uh, perceived by the people, uh, since you know um, early. Um, Earlier this month, you know, the people we have the um, the lowest income, uh, close to the speak, are uh, close to the minimum wage. Yes, receiving more money. Then, of course, for the from the uh, state, the tax, but not from the, tax, the employers. The tax no, but, for the but, employers, but, 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 it's not true yeah. because the bonuses which were given last bonus year not a wage were, were really followed by the companies, and we must uh, no, we we must uh, say that the the companies the, the, have been uh, really playing the game by giving more money by the end of uh, December. Entre l'année, what's the move you'd like to see? What's the we strong measure you'd like to see? Yes, and how dare you? Or dare you say we are impatient? We don't want more money. We don't want your 17 billions. We don't want that. We want a real, real democracy. We want to be proud and able to live with our works, even if we are a low income, 
a French citizen, a world citizen, must be able to live even with a low income. And that is the truth. Doing. And now with a medium income, you just can't live properly. So we are not impatient. We want democracy. We want dignity and justice. Your president, it is not mine anymore, can't have stopped, can have stopped this movement five, year, five months ago. It's completely wait, wait, just a Hang on, let me, let, me, let me understand, André Lanet. When you say you want democracy, what, what exactly do you mean? We want a real democracy. Now, citizens can't vote anymore. If there is no referendum, uh, the government de decide everything for us. And when citizens go in the street and say, gently, firstly, please, Listen to us. Just listen to us. We want to help you to rule the, the country properly. He sent us the police. So you're saying... You, this for, democracy... So for you, more democracy means uh, more um, citizens referendums, citizens initiatives. Direct democracy. We want, we want the REC. We want the citizens be able to rule uh, our country. Mm, yeah. that, that, that is a, that is a we want to be heard. that's a measure that's put forth by some within the movement but for others there are other priorities the yellow vest movement doesn't speak with just one voice and that's the difficulty of a leader that's, that's movement. the problem they don't have any uh, real anyway spokesperson. nobody nobody yes, yes. and then yellow uh, vest or not yellow vest nobody can say democracy Revendications are not that clear, but about democracy, we heard about it. Uh, I think we, we listened to that. Um, Should there be more uh, referendums? No. And uh, we are going to uh, Just to uh, review the uh, you know what we call the uh, this uh, shared um, uh, initiative for referendum, shared referendum, shared between the people. We are going going to lower the um, uh, the uh, the threshold to one million people, so one million people together with uh, the uh, MPs will yeah, be right able now, right to... Right now, to be able to, to, to bring up for debate the idea of a referendum, you need four million signatures. You say you want to lower it to one million. One million. So right. that has been uh, announced. And I must say that most of the, uh, know, say the progress to... on democracy were already included in the uh, constitutional reform that we were supposed to pass last year. Unfortunately, we were not, we were not able to pass this bill mm. at that time because of the Benalla story, so I'm not going to come back on that. But it's really unfortunate because, you know, there was this idea of having a citizen forum as well based on the CESA, which is a bit of well, a, a body that is um, involved in all social and environmental issues, and now we'll open it to citizens. We will lower the threshold for the referendum, and we will provide more... Um, first, uh, I would say more opportunities for the people to act on uh, by petition. You know, I think it's very important. We are moving the right direction, and this is where I agree. We need to have a more inclusive no, democracy. Impact, I agree yeah. with the Yellow Vest on that one. Uh, André Lanet, let me ask you because already France is one of the countries in Western Europe where Parliament is the weakest in relation to the executive branch of government. If you have more citizens' initiatives, more referendums, will that further erode the uh, legitimacy of the parliament? Yes. Uh, it's, we want a, a parliament with citizens now. We want I am a citizen, <laughs> by the way. Our... I've been elected, but that's what I am. Um... No. By citizens without power. Too much power. Your, your thoughts on this, Thierry, 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 Lévesque, Lévesque, Thierry Lévesque, because what, one of the lessons of this election in 2017 was that before in France, yes, you had a strong executive, but you also had strong political parties. You couldn't win an election without a machine. Emmanuel Macron becomes the first president in decades to, yes. to, to, to attain office but after without a big machine. He created his uh, political party, which happens to be uh, at, at the end traditional also in, in its policies. But I think the problem uh, that uh, the, uh, Mr. Lanier uh, evoked is that uh, the, the 
the lack of the feeling of lack of democracy. So Mr. Macron uh, announced he, he, he's going to create a new uh, consultative uh, assembly composed of citizens. That is a, a step forward. Yeah, the, but probably, a uh, probably people, people in general to need more to be to, to be able to uh, to express themselves on the on the current politics. That that's the point he that he's even solved yeah. for. La me. Last week, when he staged his first uh, Elysee Palace press conference after nearly two years in office, uh, President Macron reflected on that great debate, those three months of town hall style meetings that have just wrapped up. The impatience, the demands that I make on myself, that I make on the government, I had them a bit with the French people. So the impression I gave was of giving constant orders, of being tough, sometimes unfair. I regret that, because it's not what I'm like deep down and because I don't think it helped my case. Thierry Lévesque, so, he, you know, admitting that he, uh, he uh, perhaps needed to come down from his pedestal a little bit. I think he, uh, he, has, uh, he has been... Um, his opinion has been modified by this movement because he admitted him, uh, himself that uh, his uh, policy towards the pensioners was unfair. He admitted also that uh, we needed more consultation, more democracy. So he created this organ. Which is the not problem with Emmanuel Macron or is the problem with the institutions of a constitution which give the keys to a lot of power exactly. in the hands of one mm. person. The Fifth Republic is, uh, oh. and this uh, constitution gives um, most power to the uh, to the president. And uh, since uh, we have the same timing, you know, for for the legislative elections, of course, it's it's a way to be more efficient. And this is what we were elected for, you know, at the beginning. Is uh, that's why you know all this uh, we. We, we got a vast majority, and we wanted really to to make the, pro the, the, the country progress. And we look at efficiency of the of the of the reforms. But I think that what uh, President Macron has understood that efficiency is not the final goal. You know, the final aim is really to look at uh, people's need. And with that respect, he admitted that on the pensioners, there was a lot of pressure because sometimes, so they are losing money, you know, because of of the taxes and, and because of the inflation. And, and then uh, they have to help their parents, they have to help their, their children. So President Macron really understood the situation of pensioners is not that easy so that's what we we went back on on this uh, on this reform regarding the um, the the taxes on the on the on the pensioners all right and you then, went back, you went back on that let me just yeah. bring in andre Lanné on this yeah. because andre uh, the consistently polls show two things first what you just expressed that the french want a system that's more democratic but there are also surveys that also show that the french also want a strong leader is that a contradiction? How do you know that French want strong leaders? The Fifth, the fifth Republic imposes a strong leader. We don't want strong leader. We want a group of citizens named French to rule their country properly with dignity. So which with equity? Which people can you can you mention? Which kind of who are the citizen you would like to see ruling the the, the, the country? Do you think it's a really yes, reali yes. realistic the, 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 uh, the 70, view? The seventy percent of cities of French citizens who didn't vote for Macron, seventy percent. Okay, it's a large majority, but not no, for Macron. Second tour, but for second us. Second tour, it was second round. It, second round sorry, it was. It was. Uh, I think uh, sixty-four percent in favor of uh, Macron. It was. It was a game. It was a game. The game we all know. Everything except Le Pen. Okay, let's talk about the first tour. First round. So you okay. want to have elections That's every it. year? So I, I should not do. Sorry. People Asking the question. Don't want Macron. So. All right, well, the good news is there are other elections coming up, and those will be a measure of uh, where things and stand. To it. And uh, it's too <laughs> early to say what impact the Yellow Vest movement will have on those European elections. They take place on May the 26th across the continent. Now, this is the Daily Snap poll by the IFOP news agency. Uh, for now, that Yellow Vest list uh, would get 2.5%. But, André Lané, uh, it's early days because you've just... You've just announced that, 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 that you're running. Um, 
what are your ambitions for the for these European elections? Our ambitions put Macron away from Europe. Okay, that's it. And we for yourself, what are your Europe? ambitions for yourself? As more as possible, we want to we want to federate people who don't want to vote anymore for Europe because they don't understand what Europe is. They don't understand uh, how Europe rules our country, our uh, our laws. They don't understand that. They're, so now we want to to give up the key to 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 give us the keys of the Europe to let to make a rick in Europe to make our vote. Uh, our vote citizens done issue, by all it. citizens. Yeah. Um, Thierry yes. Lévesque, traditionally European elections turn out a little bit lower. Uh, it's um, even though it's a it's a continental election for the, you're electing the European Parliament, people usually vote for along national lines for national issues. Yes. What will this vote be about in France? Probably this movement uh, going to influence the vote, but uh, I'm not a politi Which way? <laughs> politician. So because I don't. you see the, the the latest polls show that uh, La République en Marche yeah, would, it's, would it's, come it's out ahead, but it's just a poll, isn't it? So it can uh, change right. in, in a few weeks. At the moment, I think French citizens are not most of them really aware that a vote is going to happen because nobody speaks about it except you at the moment. <laughs> and uh, at the moment, we are more on the social issues. So. Pr I think the result is very uncertain this year because of this uh, atmosphere. It, the, will it matter? Anyway, okay, split. we know in the UK that these European elections will matter more than in the past because of Brexit. Will Because of the Yellow Vest movement, will you say these European elections will matter a little more than they usually do? I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that because people who participate to the social movements don't really vote, are not, do not really believe in traditional politics. So uh, I don't think it's going to be really connected to the, to the French atmosphere of the moment. Natalia Pouzirev, will this be a different Depends European elections from the uh, ones we've seen before? Not because of the yellow vest, I don't think so. Um, but of course, uh, the um, national issues always come into the perspective of any elections, uh, even if it's for continental, uh, if they are continental elections. Uh, however, you know, uh, Europe was really at the core of um, the candidat Macron, Ma um, during the presidential campaign. So the people who voted for, for us are really pro-European. So there were about 24% at the first round, of the pres presidential election. So what is important really is that these people come and, 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 and put their vote in the ballot. The, 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 must, the, 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 the first uh, concern uh, about the European election is that uh, not so many people turn up to vote. And this is really the issue. But uh, I would say all the pro-Europeans um, know what is, last what time is at turnout, stake the last time, really this time. T last time turnout was relatively low, and it was yes. the National Front, the far-right party exactly. that finished tops. Will it be the same this time? Well, I hope not. And this is why, what we, we have to be... Well, we, we started, we talked about Europe during the presidential campaign. So I think the people uh, were confident in the progressist um, politics we are, we are um, leading uh, will turn up to vote because they know Europe is at a turning point at the moment. And what is at stake is very important, is how Europe uh, is going to mm. evolve. Do, you want, do we want less Europe or more Europe in front of the two superpowers that are United States and it's China, it's Europe. really what is at stake. It's really it's important no to have the people vote. A better, a better Europe, says André Lannay. That'll be the last word. Best of luck for your, for your campaign heading toward that May 26th. The poll, I want to thank you as well, Natalia Pouzirev. Okay. Thierry Lévesque, stay with us, please. Media Watch is next. And we say hello to Yenna Lee. Hi, Francois. Happy May Day. Happy May Day to you too. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, uh, it's been, uh, of course, we've been saying it here. The the violence uh, on the sidelines of the Paris demonstration, kind of uh, 
sucking the oxygen in the room in this country. Indeed, I am going to talk to you about International Workers' Day, and I'm going to start in France because you've been talking about it at your, during your debate. Um, there have been huge protests across the country, and I'd like to start with the fact that analysts have been talking about this convergence between the black, the yellow, and the red movements. Um, of course, the red refers to the labor unions, the traditional members who organize these protests, these marches, uh, organize and participate in. The yellow refers to the yellow vest, and you see here in an old, it's a revamped poster of an old union um, piece of art, I guess you could call it. And of course, the black would be the black blocks, the far left uh, movement. And here you have a graffiti that says, yellow vest, black blocks, we don't wear the same shirt, but we have uh, the same passion. Here's a cartoonist um, he, whose name is Jacques, and he summed it up in this picture. In France, people give each other lily of the valley of on flowers. On May 1st, yeah. On May the 1st. And he, um, his take or on it Or sell it to raise money for the trade unions. Indeed. And here you see they've... The Communist Party. They have, and they, I've seen some today. And they've taken up the new colours of yellow, uh, red and black. Uh, what's interesting to note today is that it's actually the one-year anniversary, kind of, of the Ben Allah scandal, even though it didn't erupt until July. Yeah, Emmanuel Macron's former bodyguard... Uh, Indeed. ...was caught on videotape... Uh, beating up May Day protesters on the 1st of May 2018. And it was really a turning point for Macron's term because it was like the biggest major blow to his popularity, mm. you could say. And his opponents uh, have been saying it's a gift that keeps on giving because even today you see this ironic commemoration of the events, um, mm. protesters getting really creative, wearing Alexandre Benalla masks. Um, here you have a picture from Marseille when it says... Joyeux Ben Alaversaire, it's a play on words of Ben Ala and birthday um, or anniversary. I would you translate that? Ben Ala birthday? Ben Alaversary. Yeah. All right. uh, here in Paris as well, <laughs> Ben Alaversary in the streets. And I'm going to end um, with this. No to the banalisation des violences policières, which translates to no to the trivialization of police brutality, with a pun again on Ben Ala and banalisation. All right, so, so ben, but, but we should point out that it's May Day around the world. Mm. There have been other movements. Uh, that, uh, there's been, uh, in St. Petersburg, uh, arrests uh, that, that have taken place because of anti-Putin slogans. And, of course, the big focus uh, has been and is on Caracas. Indeed. Um, Self-declared interim president Juan Guaido has called again for a massive day of protest. It's a real test for him to see if people will come out in, in a huge number. People have started to gather, and here you can see on his official Twitter account, these are the pictures he's been tweeting. There's pretty huge crowds out there. Um, Although it's pretty calm, except I'd say at La Carlota Air Base so far, you see tear gas has used, there were scuffles on the sidelines. Meanwhile, Nicolas Maduro supporters too are out on the streets for Labor Day. This clip um, shows crowds outside the presidential palace in Caracas. Um, as you can tell, reactions on social media are obviously very polarised uh, mm. to do with this. Uh, because yeah, the it's, it's very for, left versus right. It is. The battle for Venezuela really continues both online and offline. A Brazilian cartoonist, Carlos Latufe, depicting Guaido very much as a puppet of the US and calling what he's doing a coup d'etat. Whereas this lawmaker, on the other hand, says that Guaido supporters are on the right side of history. All right. And, and what's that hashtag? Vamos con todo. All right. Many thanks for that. Yena Lee, many thanks. I want to thank our panel once again. Thank you for joining us here. Yes in the France 24 debate.